Now here you have x comma y where x plus y is 5 is what type of a function? Is it a function? Definitely it's a function. We, if you put in various values of x, you get the corresponding values of y. x is 0, y is going to be 5, x is 1, y is going to be 4, x is 2, it's going to be 3, x is 3, it's going to be 2. Various values have infinite set. For every x, there is a unique value of y. Because it's a simple linear function. Even if it's a simple linear function, it is not a composite function. Composite function involves two functions being together. It is a function, it is one one mapping. So it's a kind of a one one function. Each domain has a unique range, so we call it as a one one mapping. And yes, we do have it that way. Okay. X comma y, where x is equal to 4. So if we try to list these. We have say 4, some value of 4, some corresponding value, 4 comma 5, it could be 4 comma 4 and so on. That is whatever be the value of y, x's value remains the same. So here we have a case wherein there are at least two ordered pairs in which the first term is the same. So, it is not a function in the first place. It could be a relationship but not a function because the value of x remains the same. That is the first member of each ordered pair remains the same. Even if two ordered pairs exist of this kind where the first term is repeated, it is not a function. So, it is definitely not a function. Yes, it is not a 1-1 one -one mapping also. It is not a function at all. Right, it's not a function. Okay. Y is equal to x square is not a function, a function, inverse mapping, none of these. So, y is equal to x square. So, again here, it is going to be various values of x square. So, for example, you have various values of x square. Say x is say minus 1, x is 1. So, accordingly, y in both the cases is going to be 1. x is 2, x is minus 2, you get y as 4. So, you will have things like minus 1, comma 1, 1, comma 1, 2, comma 4, minus 2, comma 4. So, in each of these ordered pairs, the first term is not repeated, even though in many cases, the second term is repeated, which is okay. This is an onto kind of a function. So, this is definitely a function. So, it is a function. Right. Okay. Now, x is less than y is not a function or a function or 1-1 one, one mapping or none of these. If you look at this, any value of x you take, you can take some value of x that is 1. y has to be just greater. So, it could be 1, 2. It could be 1 comma 3 or 2 comma 4 or 1 comma 6. Only thing is you have to see that every value of y is greater than x. So in this we can't rule out the possibility of there being at least two ordered pairs in which the first term is not the same. There can be cases wherein it is just told that the value of y is greater than x. It's not told that x is not a constant, x can be a constant, when it is not definite, you can have 1 comma 2. So, there is no specific relation between x and y. y could be any value greater than x. So, for every value of x, you can have a wide variety of y. So, this is not a function. Yes. So, all these satisfy. So, there are many such ordered pairs which will have the first term the same in this case. So, it is not a function. Right, it's not a function. Okay, now we'll be taking up some examples of composite functions. f of x is 1 upon 1 minus x and g of x is x minus 1 upon x. We have been asked to find f of g of x. Now, f, so f, we can even write this way, f of g of x. We can even write it this way. f of g can even be written as this way which means that the original function is 1 upon 1 minus x and instead of x, you are putting g of x. That's what it means. 
which means this is 1 upon 1 minus x minus 1 by x. This will give you 1 upon x minus x plus 1 upon x. This goes to the numerator and becomes x. So, f of g of x or fog x is nothing but k. Now, what would be g of x? So, g o f. This is nothing but g of f of x. So, here we take the original function that is x minus 1 upon x. So, there you will substitute f of x minus 1 upon f of x. x is replaced by f of x. Now, this is going to be instead of f of x, you put 1 upon 1 minus x minus 1 upon 1 upon 1 minus x. This one simplification becomes 1 minus 1 plus x upon 1 minus x divided by 1 upon 1 minus x. This is cancelled, so you get x upon 1 minus x into 1 minus x upon 1 and ultimately it is x. So g of x is also the same as f of g of x that is x. So even this is x. So this is a very good example of composite function where the variable is replaced variable in the given function is replaced by the other function. Okay. Yes, both of them turn out to be x. Okay. The function f of x is 2 raised to x is a 1 1 mapping. 1 many mapping, many 1. So, let us take these things. Suppose you take various ranges. So, domain is say 0 minus 1, 1, 2, minus 2. So, range would be what? For example, 2 raised to 0 which is 1, 2 raised to minus 1 which is half, 2 raised to 1 is 2, 2 raised to 2 is 4, 2 raised to minus 2, 2 raised to minus 2 is 1 by 4. That means for each of these values in the domain, you get different values in the range. So, it is a 1, 1 mapping. It's so clearly a 1, 1 mapping because each value in the domain gives a unique value for the range. In simple words, every image has a unique pre-image and every pre-image has a unique image. Then you call it as a 1, 1 mapping. Okay, now we have inverse function f of minus 1 of f of x is 2x. So, what we did is a simple exercise. f of x is 2x which means x is equal to f of x upon 2. What do we do to find the inverse function? Change this x to f of minus 1x and this will become x by 2. So that means the inverse function of 2x is x upon 2. This is 1 upon 2x, so it is going to be x upon 2. Right? It is x upon 2. Alright, if x is equal to x plus 3 and g of x is x squared. So, f of g of x has been asked. So, f of g of x would mean f of g of x. So, the original function is f. So, instead of x over there, we write g of x that is x squared plus 3. In short, it turns out to be g of x the whole square plus 3 which is x square plus 3. So, we it's going to be x square plus 3. Right? We have x square plus 3. Furthermore, we have inverse h comma minus 1 when h of x is log 10x. So, we have log x to the base 10 is h of x. So, this is the process which means that x is equal to 10 raised to h of x. As per the exponential form, if log x to the base 10 is y, then x would be 10 raised to y which is that. Now, we replace x by f of minus 1 x and this h of x is replaced with x. 
So we get 10 raised to x. So the inverse function of log x to the base 10 is 10 raised to x. That is this. Okay, so we get 10 raised to x. These ones are simple processes. We just have to find the value of x. Once you get the value of x, replace x with f inverse x and f of x or y, you replace it with x and you get the inverse function. Okay, so let r be the set of real numbers such that the function of r into r and g from r to r are defined by f of x is x square plus 3x plus 1 and g of x is 2x minus 3. Find f of g, that is f of g of x. Alright, so this is going to be x square instead of x square you put g of x the whole square plus 3 into g of x plus 1 which is going to be g of x the whole square is 2x minus 3 the whole square. What are we doing? We are just replacing the variable with the function, the other function that is g of x plus 3 times 2x minus 3 plus 1 which is going to be 4x square minus 12x plus 9 plus 6x minus 9 plus 1. So this gets cancelled and you get 4x square minus 6x plus 1. So we get 4x square minus 6x plus 1 which is f of g. That is this. Right, we are getting that 4x square minus 6x plus 1. So all these composite functions can be done this way. Only thing is don't mix up f of g with g of f. And all these candidates, whenever you have questions based on calculations, keep a paper and pencil hand and try to work along when you are looking at the video. Please do that. That will help you get better fundamentals. Okay. Then f of x is given by x plus 1 the whole square. Find f of f. So it means f of f of x. Which means x has to be replaced by f of x here plus 1 the whole square. Now f of x itself is x plus 1 the whole square. So it's going to be x plus 1 the whole square plus 1 the whole square. So among these values going to be this x plus 1 the whole square plus 1 the whole square. Do we have it right? Yes, we do have that. Okay. Right. Now we have a case wherein function from r to r and the function is 2x plus 7. What will be the inverse of f? Oh, what do we do? We take f of x minus 7 is equal to 2x. So x is going to be f of x minus 7 upon 2. Now you replace x with f inverse x and replace f of x with x. So it's going to be x minus 7 upon 2. So the inverse function of 2x plus 7 is x minus 7 upon 2. Yes, we do have it right. f inverse x is x minus 7 upon 2. So now we have a is plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, b is 1, 4, 9 and f is 2 comma 4. So just for understanding, let's take this situation here. We have a is 2 minus 2, 3, minus 3. And you have b here, which is 1, 4, 9. So which means that 2 comma 4 is linked. Minus 2 comma 4 also form a pair 3 comma 9 and minus 3 comma 9. So 1, so f contains 2 comma 4, minus 2 comma 4, 3 comma 9 and minus 3 comma 9. That means there is at least one element in the range which doesn't have a free image. So and 2, at least 2, it's not a 1 1 situation is not a 1 1 function. It is more than one pre-images have one image. 
So there is at least one case wherein two pre-images or more than one pre-images have the same image. So it's a many one case, but it's not so it cannot be one to one out of question, one to one from A to B out of question. May, we are to examine between these two, many to one from A on to B or into B. Now it's definitely many to one. Many function, many values of the domain have the same value in function. If it is on to, every image would have at least one pre-image. But here there is at least one image which doesn't have a pre-image. So in that case, it is many to one function from A into B. A, all the first elements in each ordered pair belongs to A and the second element belongs to the to B. So it is A to B but many to one and it is into, not on to. Okay. Yes, we do have it that way. Then furthermore, yes, here we have f of x is x upon 1 plus root of 1 plus x square x upon and g of x is x upon root 1. Now find f of g. So which means it's going to be f of g of x. Which means wherever there is x, you put g of x in the function on root of 1 plus g of x the whole square. So g of x is going to be x upon root 1 minus x square divided by 1 upon x upon root 1 minus x square the whole square which will turn out to be x upon root 1 minus x square upon root of 1 plus x squared upon 1 minus x squared. This on simplification becomes x upon root 1 minus x squared. Upon taking LCM you get 1 minus x squared plus x squared upon 1 minus x squared 1 minus x squared and this whole thing is square root. So here minus x squared plus x squared get cancelled ultimately it is x upon root 1 minus x square divided by 1 upon 1 minus x square which is x upon root 1 minus x square into the reciprocal of this that is root of 1 minus x square upon 1 this gets cancelled and you get x by 1 which is x itself which is x. So this is how we have got one more example. So candidates concentrate a lot on these composite functions because it involves some calculation and see to it that you don't mix up f of g of x with g of f of x. Yes, we do have it as x. Okay. Now Num number of elements in the range of a constant function. So constant function and they have asked what the range is. So constant function would be of the form y is equal to some number, say 3, y is equal to 5. Suppose you consider this particular thing, this is a constant function. So the various possibilities are 1, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, minus 1, 3, all so on and so forth. So the range, whatever be the domain, minus 1, 1, 2, the first number in each ordered pair, the second number remains the same. So the range has only one value. So the number of elements in the range of constant function is 1. Number of elements in the domain of constant functions is going to be infinite. But number of elements in the range of constant function is only 1. Because whatever be the value of x, the y, y value remains the same. Because a constant function is 1 which has a constant y value. Constant range, only 1. Yes, we do have it. 